the manager, when I told him when I got here, they're probably leaving the doors open. He said, no, we don't ever prop open doors. Uh, that's their freezer, and it's propped wide open. They were in here about five minutes ago. So if they're propping that open, they're propping the other door open too. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. All right, it is Sunday, May 8th, um, Mother's Day actually, and it is about 2.06 p.m. We have a call on a walk-in cooler. They said it's all iced up. Clearly the drain pan is frozen. Temperature controller says defrost, and yeah, we got a lot of ice. We have a two coil system. There's a coil over there too, okay? So this coil's in defrost, and there's a big flaw. These have two speed fans, and they defrost in low speed, which is not good if the coil starts to frost up. So I can tell you today that we will be de disconnecting that two speed function because that is probably partially why this thing is frozen up. But at the same time, this drain line is solid. Solid, hollow, right there. So it's frozen all the way back here. So that's gonna be a chore getting that defrosted. I actually have a tool to help us with that because this drain pan is also overflowing. So I put some pans down here, try to catch some of that water. We're gonna start disassembling this coil getting the power turned off, get a water hose in here, we'll use some hot water, pull the fans out, all that stuff, and see if we can't get this guy, the drain blown out first, and then the coil's defrosted. All right, I can clearly feel the ice in there, so I've got a MAP gas torch on there. We need to be careful because we don't want the products of combustion to fill up this room and make it hard for me to breathe or displace the oxygen, right? So I wanna make sure we keep a door open every once in a while. And also, we wanna make sure that doesn't catch anything on fire, but we're gonna let that keep running for a minute careful we don't want it to melt the solder either but we just want to try to melt the ice and see if we can get this thing to start flowing so slowly work our way back I have some other methods if this doesn't work really quick then I'll show you some other ways that I have to get this defrosted so that side wasn't too bad but we still need to break this side free because this side is still a little frozen right in the top so I just want to see the water start flowing and then once we can get the water start flowing, I did, from what I can tell, it doesn't look like there's anything in the drain pan besides ice. So I've got a pan down below to catch anything that might fall. So it's starting to go now. So once it starts going, the water will actually start melting the other stuff. So we're just going to let it keep kind of draining. And then we'll start putting, uh, taking the fan guards off and putting uh, hot water in there from the top. See if we can get it to start flowing. So it looks like this wasn't as iced up as I thought it was going to be. At least the drain line. I got this uh, Klein multi bit, and this thing is awesome because it actually can be installed in an impact driver too. So if you can pull this out with one hand, it it's impact rated. So you can use it in your impact, but it's nice because it has all the driver tips on it. So it's made by Klein. I got it from TrueTechTools.com. Um, if you go to truetechtools.com and use my offer code Big Picture, you can get an 8% discount on checkout. I get a small commission when you do that. Help support the channel. But uh, yeah, this thing's awesome. So uh, getting this all pulled off, get this pulled off, and then we'll get in there and start hitting that drain section of the drain pan to try to get the ice melted so we can continue on with this repair. Okay, I can't get this one out because the ice is blocking it, so we got to get some of this ice melted so I can get the guard out. But something I want to point out, Judging just from experience, this thing has been defrosting and iced up for a long time. And the defrost is doing its job, in my opinion. We'll see. And it just keeps uh, icing up, probably because of the low speed fan motors. But you can tell because the ice is hard, it's not a frost. So it has melted, then refrozen, then melted, then refrozen several times. And you can also tell, too, that it's been trying to drain because goes way down underneath there so I got the water to start flowing you can see it running down the drain so now I can go to town with the hose and also make sure that we get all of that running down it's just gonna take time I've got lots of pans to catch any excess water but you don't want that stuff running on the ground but 
gonna take time to get it all defrosted a little bit at a time. If you methodically start melting the ice from the top to the bottom, just working your way through, what you can typically get is the whole thing to fall off the back nice and even. So I haven't even done this side yet, but it saves you a lot of time if you do it that way. All right, now um, this is a moral motor. It's a three-speed motor. The way that it works is it has three wires going to it. It's 115 volts, power leg, neutral, and then when it receives an, the 115 volt power source to this red wire, it slows down. So in order to bypass these and make them run in high speed all the time, you just disconnect the red wire on this particular one. Now tape it off and isolate it. That's what I'm gonna do on this one. I isolated them, okay? We also have a two speed relay that we're gonna disconnect over here in time, but I'm gonna finish with the motors first. But it's very important to disconnect this red wire instead of just disconnecting it at the relay because what I have seen on these motors is this black and this red will internally short and then I've seen where one motor failed but because it was only disconnected at the red right here it actually slowed down both motors and so what I had to do is disconnect the red from each one and then see which one still ran slow and then I found that we had one bad motor so when you are disconnecting the two speed option make sure you isolate the red wire at the motor and not just at the two speed relay and then we'll just disconnect the two speed relay completely tape off the red wire over here too and we'll be good to go all right so all i had to do was pull the relay out um the condenser or the evaporator fan motors are still wired in to the correct power source m1 and m2 relay comes out all the wires come out and that's pretty much it. And we just need to tape off this red wire. All right, so this is the other coil. I'm gonna get this one defrosted real quick and then hopefully we can get this guy turned back on. That's just a little bit of ice because the drain line's been melting a lot of it too, but that's crazy how much ice is on these coils. Coils all defrosted except for the suction line a little bit right here and then this panel. So we're gonna get this all melted and then we can start assembling. Before I put the fan motors in, we'll tape up the red wires and then we'll get over here and disconnect the two speed relay out of this one and get the little bit of ice over here too. I don't know why, but there's a T, well, I think it was for the beer system for some reason. I don't know what they were doing with it, but there's this T right here that someone just cut off. It has nothing to do with us because our drain's right there. It was never piped in right there, but someone's cut that off. It wasn't going to the roof or anything. I'll send someone next week to fix it because it's just when I'm washing the drains out, it's just overflowing onto the floor. Luckily, this isn't a freezer and it's not going to get in the freezer, but it's still frustrating that there's water everywhere. But like I said, I'll send someone next week to cut that stupid tea out for whatever reason. I don't know why it was there, but we'll cut it out. It wasn't us because our drains are right there and they were never piped into that. But yeah, I don't know what the dysfunction is with someone just cutting that off like that. Okay, now this is the other coil and the secondary coil. This one was top to bottom, front to back, solid with ice, okay? And the other one's way over there. What top to bottom, front to back indicates to me, the other coil has the temperature controller and the other coil is affected more so than this one is by the door being left open. So more than likely, this started because they were leaving the door open and the temperature controllers on the other coil. So the, the system keeps running and running and running until frost starts to build up and the temperature controller has the built-in defrost on the other coil. So warm air comes in when it goes in defrost and probably because them leaving the door open again and it helps to defrost the coil but the warm air doesn't make it over to this side. So that's why this one was top to bottom. I suspect that when I turn it on we're gonna have a clear sight glass and everything's gonna be fine. Um, we'll throw a temp sensor up there just to make sure the temperature controller is accurate But I don't think there's going to be anything wrong with the system other than the door being left open The manager when I told him when I got here, they're probably leaving the doors open. He said no, we don't ever prop open doors uh, That's their freezer and it's propped wide open. They were in here about five minutes ago So if they're propping that open, they're propping the other door open too systems running Sight glass is clear. I'm not going to spend too much time on this today. Oh snap. I was wondering where my shoes were. I've been rolling around barefoot for a couple weeks. I wondered where I left those things. Cool. Well then I don't got to walk barefoot anymore. Anyways, uh, yeah, sight glass is clear. So I'm going to leave this be for the rest of today. We'll come back tomorrow or the next day. 
um, and we'll go through the system. Once the system's completely down to temp, I'm gonna go spend Mother's Day with my wife, or the rest of Mother's Day, and uh, maybe barbecue with the family. So that's it for today, and uh, we'll get back out here. We are back. It is a couple days later, no ice on the coils, all is well. I'm gonna cut this little section out. Got a little piece of pipe here. I always keep scrap pipe in my truck. Get rid of that real quick, and then we're gonna change an evaporator fan motor on their walk-in freezer coil. My tubing cutter's not working. What the heck? It's one of those auto cutters, damn thing. Oh. I don't think there's anything wrong with the tubing cutter. It's got a busted drain line. I bet you that thing froze at some point. That's weird. Oh yeah, nothing wrong with the tubing cutter. This one's all jacked up too. What the heck, man? This whole drain line's busted up. Look at the bottom of that drain line. It's all broken right there. And right there, look at that, all cracked. That's nuts. Must have froze at some point. The only downside is, is it black in the inside of that, so I'll have to clean it, but it's all good. We're gonna let this guy cool, and then we're gonna do it. I put a union on this side, and just a normal coupling on this side, that way we can blow the drain out if need be. Now I don't have any insulation, so we'll just have to foam tape it. I forgot to bring some, but it'll be fine. Just need to tighten this up. Some channel locks. All right, it's not perfect. You know, if I'd have brought insulation, it'd have been nicer. But then again, too, I don't typically have that half inch insulation at the shop, but regardless. Um, repaired it, put a union there, we're good to go. Um, not really worried about that section right there. We're going to uh, go into the walk-in freezer now because we have a bad evaporator fan motor in there. This is the motor that wasn't working. Like there's a piece of plastic or something stuck in that one. But uh, it's hitting something. The motor's got like ice all around it too. Uh, we'll pull it out, hopefully the blade's not damaged. Yeah, I don't think that motor it's gonna work anymore. It's all full of ice too. <laughs> we got it swapped out. And now all the motors are running, so I don't see any need to go any further because the sight glass was clear when I was here the other day. There's no ice on the coils. The customer's not complaining. I just saw that one of the motors wasn't working. So we're not gonna dig any deeper on that. We're gonna close this one out and uh, that's it. So that was a nice uh, Mother's Day service call. You know, 
I try to bite my tongue. I try not to show frustration. Of course, I, d I don't show frustration to the customer. I keep it to myself, right? And I show frustration to you all because I feel it's important for you all to know that I'm normal and I get frustrated, but I also have a filter and I know when to keep it to myself and let it out somewhere else, right? Because of course, I'm not gonna throw a fit and start throwing tools and yelling at the customer because they called me on Mother's Day, right? Um, I get frustrated, you know, and but I, but again, I keep it to myself. Okay, this clearly had been happening for a very long time, and I did discuss that very politely with the customer because he's like, "Yeah, it was fine yesterday," and I go, "No, it wasn't." I said, "With this amount of ice, this has been like this for a couple days, and it's been building and building. This isn't normal, you know." And he's like, "Oh, okay, you know." So, and I explained that to several managers on duty. Now, here's the biggest thing, and this is where I understand. Yes, I get frustrated, okay? But these restaurants are going through a lot right now. They have a turnover rate of employees that's through the roof. The management can't even keep up with it. They're lucky to even keep managers right now. And it's not just one restaurant chain. It's almost all of them. They're all struggling to find people that want to work. And there's a lot of reasons why you can get into socioeconomic blah, 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 jargon stuff. There's all kinds of reasons as to why they can't keep employees and stuff. Okay. But inevitably I'm there to fix things. And yes, I get frustrated, but I know when to keep it in and I just need to get it fixed. Okay. So yes, it was mother's day. Yes. I wanted to spend it with my wife. I wanted to, you know, do things, but it worked out. It was okay. It wasn't that big of a deal. I was gone for a couple hours. I was still able to make it home, have a barbecue do some stuff with the family. So everything worked out and everything turned out okay. All right. But so as far as the service call goes, I wanted to address something, the two speed fan motors. So here's my policy because I installed this equipment and I left the two speed fan motors wired up from the beginning. It has been a year and it's, it's been like two years, I think, since I installed this equipment, maybe at least a year, maybe two since I installed it. And we haven't had problems yet, but clearly the customer's having an issue leaving the door open. So I took the two speed, um, you know, fan motor equation out of the picture. It's just completely gone. And now we have a standard defrost. Okay. So I try to let it be, and I've had this happen on a couple of different other locations too, where I left the two speed fan motors wired in. And once I started to notice, notice freezing up issues, then I took the two speed fan motor out. Now I have other locations that have had two speed fan motors for longer than this location. Okay. So I'm not just going around deleting that from every single system. I'm only doing it when there's problems. Okay. Um, now I do want to address the fact that I talked about when you delete the two speed fan option, you don't want to just disconnect the relay because I have had a motor where internally it shorted and it made both the motors run on a slow speed because it was only disconnected at the relay. And because they were still interconnected um, via that red wire, it was this exact same coil setup, it made both the motors spin slow. So once I disconnected the red wires on each one, then one of them sped up and then the other one stayed slow. So I knew that that was the problematic motor and went ahead and changed it. I don't know if I made a video on that or not, but anyways, all right. Um, and then the last thing is, uh, you know, just, I start to notice trends. Nobody's ever told me anything about the ice and how you can notice patterns. I've just defrosted enough coils. I am an official professional ice melter. Okay. I know my stuff. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, you know, I just started to notice patterns and trends and I can kind of tell what looks like ice has been melting. You know, if you see a coil that's just frosted up, that's typically it just happened. If you see thick ice, that means it's been like that for a very long time. If you see clear ice, it typically means that it's melted, refroze, melted, refroze. Like there's a lot of different patterns that I notice. Okay. If we're observant and we use our senses as professionals, we start to notice that kind of stuff. Okay. So I really appreciate y'all making it to the end as usual. If you haven't already, please consider checking out my website, hvacrvideos.com. It's a cool way to help support the channel. We got uh, t-shirts, hats, beanies, sweaters, all that good stuff. We have women's t-shirts on there, V-neck t-shirts with a women's cut. Uh, they, they're the, the flag shirt. They still have the flag on the shoulder. That's one thing I really like this shirt is because I'm really proud that it does have the flag on the shoulder. Now, my other one is just a big picture shirt. It doesn't have the flag, but this one, I just like it. It's kind of cool. So um, I really appreciate you all. Please uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and uh, we will catch you on the next one, okay?